This is a tax cut. Instead of it provides it up the ante how much you could get. He goes, well, what if Barack Obama chose black and he's biracial? I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I go, I think that's fascinating consider, considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, mm -hmm. you do you. Parenthetically, when you build a charging station, it's like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the Maryland Oil Company back in the turn of the, in the 1920 in that area. They went from state to state convincing people that they put, allowed them to put 20,000 gallons of gasoline under the ground. They didn't want them around. Okay. Okay, roger that, uh, Mr. President. Fine. Whatever, whatever exactly that meant. Got it? Yeah. All clear. So, um, I don't even, I don't even care about starting or going to the, the um, Biden stuff. He's, uh, he's not making a lot of sense. We knew that this was something with him. We knew that this could be a recurring. Ooh, hello. We're gonna we're gonna have some decisions to make here soon about this stuff. So I hello, heard, hello. Um, yeah. Um, so whatever the Biden's, I don't care. He's he's out trying to sell his infrastructure package. Meanwhile, Kirsten Cinema is being uh, chased out of places in. In pursuit on planes, uh, which Alice wrote about, about in her Substack today, mm -hmm. on my Substack, I guess, but uh, chased about uh, around in planes, chased around in the ladies' restroom in a stall as one woman's outside antagonizing her, and some dude is filming. My feeling would be, if you are a woman like her in that stall and you have self-defense um, or weapons of defense with you, let her rip in that situation at that dude. Uh, for starters. Yeah, any guy who's filming in the women's room needs uh, to be arrested, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, of course. And it's also, it's also I believe, very much illegal. I to, think there's a to reasonable be filming. expectation of privacy in a bathroom. How is this possible that there, that there are two sets of rules like this? It's amazing. Can I just go over to the Hilton Boston now and just hang out in the women's restrooms say, yeah, so I've got a political protest thingy. No, here. you Can can't you... even you can't even go to a school committee meeting. That's not right. even allowed for if you're a Republican, you can't even go to your local school committee meeting when they have a designated time for public comment and talk during it. That's not even allowed. You're gonna get a visit from the FBI and they're gonna start monitoring your social media channels because you dared to go there and tell them you didn't want your kids uh, taught that they can pick whatever pronouns they want and that they're an evil colonizing oppressor and um, made to wear a mask all day by psychotic people uh, who are afraid of children's germs and shouldn't be in a school building. I mean, like, that's, that's what you know, Republicans get under the Biden administration. Merrick Garland has said he's going to sick the FBI on people who act too aggressive at school board meetings. But you can, if you're a liberal activist, you can follow even, you know, like moderate Democrats into the bathroom and film them while you yell at them about things that they have no control over. Like what the Senate parliamentarian decides about reconciliation bills, mm -hmm. you know, like that's, that's the way the rules work now, I guess. It's so great. You know what? If you're somebody, and this is nothing new, if you're somebody who wants to get to be mean to girls, just be an activist. Be a good liberal activist. Oh, yeah, because if you attack from the left, you can be as mean and sick Absolutely. as you want. Absolutely, yes. as we've observed, a lot of these liberals have, like, weird anger problems. Oh, in yeah. In particular towards women. Right, and also, yeah, and you can yell at people, women at dinner, and be mean to people. You or if can you be see a big, someone strong, in a store without a mask. Big, big, strong mm. bully against Ivanka Trump if she's in a, 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 in a plane. Absolutely, you're you're uh, encouraged to do it. As a matter of fact, you literally are encouraged to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, in this in this uh, psychotic who is running um, the Justice Department, Merrick Garland, he is all for it. He's an interesting chap. You know, I kind of wish that um, that McConnell had given him a hearing just to so we could have seen this guy in action more. He's now just a, a one of these wokesters. Imagine this guy had been in the Supreme Court. This activist. I know. It's psychotic. Incredible. It's incredible. So, so, uh, fine, and then you, he's played the Biden stuff. This is Biden today, essentially. He calls the thing a tax cut, uh, his his huge rigmarole's $3.5 trillion thing. It, he's – it's standard Biden um, distortion bullshit. He's just an old type politician, whatever. I don't care. It's It bores me. Well, I, but I think this is interesting, actually. Okay, because... do you want me to play it? 
Well, okay, I'll play it, and then I'll say my thoughts on the tax cut issue. My friends and the other team have no problem giving billionaires and millionaires gigantic tax breaks. This is a tax cut. You know, what it does is now, and it's in place, and people in your state are understanding it now, instead of it provides it up the ante how much you could get for a child under seven, you get 3600 bucks tax cut on a yearly basis. And you get 3000 for a child under 17. But guess what we did? That means we're doing it on a monthly basis now. So um, I think I think this is one of the things that will probably stay in that big bill. Mm-hmm. Because it's the, having a bigger child tax credit is fairly popular. Um, but I think that this is going to come back to haunt Democrats. Maybe not so much this upcoming tax season, but the following tax season. Uh, I think this is going to be made permanent, even if it, even if this infrastructure bill goes away, because it's because they've now introduced a lot of parents to the idea of getting a check every month. Right. Right. So is this what this does? This isn't just the, right. You this get is th- the extension of the tax credit, and it's actually okay. I've talked to people who've tried to unsign up for the monthly check thing. It's actually pretty difficult. You have to go through quite a lot of process to not have them prepay you your uh, tax refund in advance during the year, which a lot of people don't want, and a lot so of people. If they, to, so if we, for instance, we get money now, then we have to pay if. if I mean, or or we don't get it again next year. Right. Well, we won't get it again in our tax refund at the end of the year. Okay. Um, so now, do we already get all of all our money? Not all. So, and let me explain why I say it's not going to come back to haunt them this year. It's going to come back to haunt them the following year. So basically what they did, they increased the size of the child tax credit by about 50%. It was $2,000 a year uh, for just for 2021. It's 3000 for kids five and under um it's 3600 um and so but it's it, for most kids it's increased 50 percent from 2000 to 3000 and then they're ta- they're paying you up to half of it in advance for the second half of the year so starting in july they're giving you one twelfth of it each month now this year that means that they're only giving you half in advance Right. So like, for example, if hypothetically you had four kids in an ordinary year, you would get back eight thousand dollars this year. The amount is bumped up to twelve thousand dollars, which is great, but they're paying you six thousand in advance. So you'll only get six thousand back at the end of the year. However, next year, if they continue to do the same monthly amount, They'll pay you the whole amount in advance, which means that when you go to do your taxes in February of 2023, after they've been paying you your entire child tax credit in advance for a year, you know, say you hypothetically have four kids. Well, it's your thing is going to be $12,000 smaller than you possibly thought it was going to be. It's certainly going to be $6,000 than it was the year before. That's a big amount of money. Now, like, for example, we withhold a lot more than we need to because I hate to get caught off guard like that. So, like, that that $6,000 wouldn't be, like, our whole refund. But for a lot of people, it would be or more. They could end up owing unless they adjust their um, withholding during the year, which, I mean, many people probably won't do. And they depend on getting that refund check in a big amount. I mean... The fact that we do taxes this way in this country is just insanity anyway, where like, you know, they just come at you one time a year and you have to figure it out. Like the whole thing's a mess and it, the system shouldn't be like this. They've already changed how you do withholding so that it's like impossibly Byzantine to, to control how much you're withholding from your paycheck. It's like a series of trick questions instead of just being able to put in you, you're taking, you know, four exemptions or whatever. So... The whole thing is a stupid system and a mess, but what's going to happen is people are going to get back a little less this year, and they'll still be for getting the monthly payment because they'll think that's great, and then next year they're going to get their whole tax refund and monthly payments instead of just half, and then they're going to end up owing in February or April of 2023, and then there's going to be a problem because people are going to be thousands in the hole for for tax payments as a surprise because they're not going to have followed this because they didn't have any say in whether any of this happened M- money just started showing up in their right. bank account every right. month when you say people you mean shaddocks i assume 
Well, yeah, but I mean, like, at least I follow it, so I know what's going on, so mm -hmm. I like know what to expect. But I mean, a lot you of don't people tell me the information. But a lot of people don't spend that much time thinking about the tax code during the course of the year. And right. you know, like we got people used to money showing up from the IRS at random times. Yes. And like now it shows up monthly. That's cool. Like and like I say, this year the hit to the tax credit isn't going to be that bad, but the following year it will be. So like yes, while technically they're increasing the size of the child tax credit. A lot of people are going to be surprised uh, when they go to file their 2022 taxes. Right. Uh, and, and, that, and that's that's never a good thing for politicians when people are surprised by getting a lot less money than they thought they were well, going to get. Right. And also, I, I would think that handing out cash in a time of inflation, one, is probably not recommended. I think it's generally uh, yeah, confirmed and wise. And then suddenly... If inflation is going to be increasing and spiking during this transitory inflation that we're mm -hmm. having, for people to suddenly be in the rears now to the government and be short on cash in a time of inflation when, uh, you know, cash itself has been devalued mm -hmm. would, would be uh, trouble. Mostly, I just want money for me. Um, <laughs> and I don't that, – that I consider it sound policy now mm -hmm. since I've quit on having a conscience if to give Tom Shattuck money. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do we have we have four children what does this mean for us We have four children one of whom is under age 5 so we get uh He's the triple sevens Mhm mm So uh we get uh $12,600 per year which means we get $1,050 per month for our four kids Okay <laughs> What a racket. What a racket. <laughs> but it also means that we'll get less back in taxes at the end of this year. If we don't opt out of it starting next year, it will seriously dampen our uh, tax refund that we get at the okay. end of the year. Okay. Well, so. I'll be dead. That's fine. Uh, all oh, right. So, um, so that's the tax part of the Biden uh, speech or whatever. So, but that's a road. tax cut according to him. That's so a cut, tax cut according to him. The other thing you heard was Biden just rambling. <laughs> Parenthetically, when you build a charging station, it's like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the American Oil Company back in the turn of the, in the 19, 1920 in that area. They went from state to state convincing people that they put allow them to put 20,000 gallons of gasoline under the ground. They didn't want them around. But get yeah. What? <laughs> it doesn't turn of it doesn't no I, nobody knows petrol underground it does just he just went off script and you got to see it parenthetically gets, it gets he lets you see it just a glimpse into his mind which is excellent <laughs> i don't even care i don't even care anymore um so i do want to get to sage steel yes sage steel is somebody who i think i saw or <clears throat> i think i saw one of the super bowls mm -hmm. i don't know if i ever had her on i didn't know much about her but i knew that jerry callahan loved her okay because she had these conservative tendencies. She was an ESPN person. Mm -hmm. So ESPN is full of of wokesters. Sage yeah. Steele is a woman who at that point was in her, I guess she's still maybe in her 30s or maybe mm -hmm. early 40s. Now, very pretty, very intelligent, and she's a black woman. And not crazy woke. Not crazy woke, no. Mm -hmm. And so now she has been uh, essentially suspended, put on ice. For an interview she did with Jay Cutler, in which she said some things. Now, remember, plenty of people said plenty of things on ESPN. You're allowed to. Jamel Hill said everything that could be said in ESPN, as long as it's in the right direction. Right. You know, Sage Steele has her own thoughts, and I never really heard her. But she said a few things and got in trouble, and now she's been put on ice. Um, including, uh, this is, she talked, uh, she told a story about being on The View, and this is considered a serious uh, attack racist attack on the former president barack obama i don't know how that's possible i thought that black women couldn't be racist to, i don't know i don't know they the can have are... internalized white supremacy okay so that's what happened here real quick story when i was on i used to do a couple um fill-ins on the view mm -hmm. and i guess this was even before this is when obama was still president and barbara walters like ripped me live tv and then afterwards too um because they were wondering they're like why is it so important to you to say that you're biracial i'm like i because my mom's white she's irish italian and my dad's black and i mm -hmm. i'm like why yeah. why not like i right. actually feel like i have the best of both worlds yeah and 
I think it's a huge blessing and I'm, why not? And, and she's like, well, what happens when you, uh, when you fill out your census? I'm like, well, I don't know when the last time I filled out my census was, but yeah. if they make you choose a race, yeah. she's like, what are you going to put? I go, well, both. She's like, well, you can't. He goes, well, what if Barack Obama chose black and he's biracial? I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I go, I think that's fascinating consider, considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, mm -hmm. you do you. I'm going to do me. And then they put up a picture behind me of my parents and my brothers and me. And I was like, listen, I'm pretty sure my white mom was there when I was born. Yeah. And like, I... I love her. My, my white family loves me as much as my black family. And I got killed for that, Jay. And so I still, I still am, feel strongly about being biracial because um, that is, a, isn't that what we want with diversity? Yeah. Well, no, that was uh. not, uh, no. So <laughs> she has been, uh, she has been put on ice for a bit here. I suspended, I guess she uh, did. Um, uh, she did. Um, say in comments i know i made some comments created controversy for the con company and i apologize we're in the midst of an extremely c challenging time that impacts all of us and it's more critical ever that we communicate constructively and thoughtfully that was a statement provided by espn so that's the hostage note <laughs> it's go not actually too apologetic to her credit no no um but 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 here's the thing it's it also what's wrong with what she said Nothing. She's a black woman who can have any choice to be whatever she wants. And she's being hectored by Barbara Walters as to what she can be. And mm -hmm. she d criticizes the uh, Obama for, uh, for you know, only embracing his black identity. Sage Steele makes a good point. The dad screwed on Obama and left him. Left mom. Abandoned. Oh, you're not allowed to talk about black dads We're... leaving. That's... Mm -hmm. No, but actually, he's... Uh, <laughs> it, he's... Her, Obama's dad was not an African American. You're not allowed to talk about African American men doing it. Well, I guess, but I mean, I think it veers dangerously close to a topic nobody's allowed to. Well, approach. I understand, and it, 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 it certainly does. But that's that's fine. But, but so here's the thing: mm -hmm. is that um, so? But she made a a, a point. It's not a, actually right. a point that really disparages Obama. Really, it mm -hmm. it actually kind of celebrates his mother. And her family. But fine. Who cares? That's fine. I don't know why she's not allowed to talk like people, but apparently she's not. So uh, then she goes to talk about... Remember, e ESPN is owned by Disney. Right. So she went on to criticize the uh, vaccine mandate for Disney. She didn't like it at all. She did get her the poke at ESPN. She didn't like doing that. I, I think to mandate... I respect everyone's decision. I really yeah. do. Yeah. But to mandate it is um, sick. Mm -hmm. and it's scary yeah. to me in many ways. Um, but I have a job, yeah. a job that I love, and frankly, a job that I, that I need. But again, I love it. I just, um, I'm not surprised it got to this point, especially mm -hmm. with Disney. I mean, a, a global company like yes. that. But I just, um, like, it was actually emotional. Like, so, and it's funny, everybody else has their, yay, look, and here's yeah. my card, and let's, I'm like you know what you want to see what my face looked like when i had to do it mm. um so i get it to, to an extent but i think the mandate is what i really have an issue with and and i i i don't know i don't know what comes next um but i do know for me personally i feel i feel like defeated because she mm -hmm. doesn't want to get it yeah and she felt forced to get it right which is straight up fine but that's criticizing disney's policy so yeah, 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 yeah. so in trouble for that now this is where i think all this other stuff would have been forgiven but this is the identifier this is the thing that allows people to define her in a way that is not acceptable the host i did i mention it's jay cutler the former nfl qb um the host uh, uh mentions a comparison that she often gets by some people uh, you're the candace owens of espn is what <laughs> she laughs here she's in Wait, what, of... where, where did you read that i forget i mean i forget where i read it but i i made me laugh so far she's safe so far she's safe mm -hmm. <laughs> uh wow i i respect the hell out of candace owens so do i and, mm. and, yeah and yeah. because whether you agree or not yeah. she doesn't give a crap no. what you think no and she's gonna say what's on her mind oh 
So that's it. That's the bridge too far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So because of that, she's lost her identity right there. She's no longer a black person. She's no longer a woman. She doesn't get to have those things anymore. Those are stripped from her. She's just an evil now, as you said. Just a, a, any other old uh, garden variety white supremacist at this mm -hmm. point. Which is why anything else she says, all those other things are now felonies against her. <laughs> because because of who she is. So, um, hang on one second. Max, your parents want you... Sorry about that. That is us uh, announcing that the uh, our kids' friends have to go home. There was no other way to do it because the kids, we had to pay them off with our cell phones, so uh, we don't have them on us, so I couldn't mm -hmm. text. We needed to. Are you texting? I was going to, yeah. Okay, so you heard when Sage Steele said, okay, 10-4 to uh, – or, or, or embraced the comparison to Candace Owens, that was going to be it. That's it. That's in trouble. That's it. Just bad, 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 bad. But she embraced it. As a matter of fact, I heard a bunch of pundits uh, uh, say, well, not only did they call her Candace Owens, but she acted like that was a good thing. Like that was a good thing. And I don't know where this all this Candace Owens hatred come from. I don't get it at all. I love Candace Owens. I think she does a great job. I don't care that she's abrasive and strong-headed. Who cares? That's great. I have no problem with it. She's had some excellent conversations, great interviews. The one that we played last year on this show with Mark Lamont Hill, it's one of the best ever. So so that brings us to another thing. They get her on two felonies right now. Uh, the, we get her on Barack Obama, and they get her on vaccines. And they get her be on those because she embraced Candace Owens. Now there's one, one more felony, and this has to do with ladies. She talked to, earlier in the interview, Sage Steele talked about having to deal with brute uh, jocks all the time in their remarks and this and that and just sucking it up and mm -hmm. in knowing it's part of the job with these guys. Don't let them get to your head, whatever. And then she talked about, you know, how to know, to be wise. Don't go to dinner with these guys. Don't date jocks. Don't date, don't whatever, you know, to stay the course. And I have personally... I have some stories of, of women who did not stay the course, and they are immediately, mostly by women, uh, trashed when they don't. It's incredible. Actually, it, it reminds me, I wish we could bring a certain guest on to talk about it. But, so here's Sage Steele talking about these interactions. I do think as women, we need to be responsible as well. It isn't just on players and athletes mm -hmm. and coaches to act a certain way. Mm. I mean, I've had talks with young women who like would come in and they'd intern um, with, with me, with our channel, or just other women who reach out to me now. And I've said to the, a couple of them, they're like, well, would you look at my tape? Would you do this? And, I, and I've said, listen, I would love to, but the way that you present yourself is not something I want to be associated with. Yeah. So when you dress like that, yeah. I'm not saying you deserve the gross comments, but you know what you're doing when you're putting that outfit on too. Yeah. Like women are smart. So don't play coy and put it all on the guys when we... And again, I'm not saying anybody deserves anything. Yes. But we need to be responsible as women too, because we know what we're doing when we put certain things on and, and then right. return a certain text. Are you expect somebody's not going to see you if you go to dinner with this guy? Like, that's on us. That's? Um, well, yeah, obviously that's, uh, you're not allowed to say that. That's on the list of things mm -hmm. you can't say. Yeah. Um, is that certain clothing on women sends a message, a visual message to guys. Um, but I mean, I think that, that that's certainly true, but I, I think a lot of women want to have their cake and eat it too with that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to have guys look at them that way and feel like they look that way because they enjoy it. And, but you know, they, they don't want any of the negative attention that comes with that. Because it comes with both, right? Right. Um, you know, but, but because I don't think um, women, like, dress in an overtly sexual way just, like, because, like, in a vacuum because they've decided to out of, like, feminism or something. It's not a choice that they're making, like, outside of society with no knowledge of, you know, how people dress or act in society or anything, right? Right. Right. So, and I mean, I think that feminists know that too. When it comes to things like, 
you know, women shaving their legs, they're aware that women don't make the choice to shave or not shave their legs, like, just because they like it or don't like it completely independently of what society thinks. People shave their legs because that's a social expectation for women, mm -hmm. is to look that way, right, in general. But... And same with, like, any other way that women dress or present their appearance or anything else, right? Is, like, you're making the choice to look that way on the basis of everything that's happening around you, on the basis of, like, the social expectations. And you know that you are sending a message with the way you dress. That's why you dress a certain way for a job interview. That's why you dress a certain way if you're going to be, you know, a sports reporter. That's why you dress a certain way if you're... I don't know, the news girl that we talked about on Instagram the other day, right? Like, every everything that people do, especially people in media, is like a branded experience for their personal brand, right? They're making all these choices and putting a lot of time into thinking about it. They didn't just, like, roll out of bed and put on whatever the first top they saw was, you know? Yes, and also, you're working at ESPN as an intern. You're working in a place very stylistic, very, you know, it's there are young celebrities walking through every single mm -hmm. day so if you're if you want a professional career then you know that's grinding that's blue, blue collar that's doing a lot of you know a lot of media stuff and cutting up stuff and doing it's a lot of grunt work so I think you may define yourself if you if you're the intern, the 22 year old attractive intern, and you decide to go on a out to dinner with the football player. Well, then you're defining yourself as somebody not in it for the work, right? In it for the red carpet, in it for the the glamour, in it for all the pretty and awesome things that you could have. And I mean, I, I think that would absolutely define you. And if you're somebody who will, in, it, it's it's interesting because it's it's one of the few areas I guess where generally men aren't effing it all up because you know men presidents men in power always always hook up with, hook up with everybody with everything etc. Mm -hmm. But this situation is one where like generally male reporters are absolutely just in it for sports it's also pathetic in its own way and i want to give jerry callahan more crap about that but they're absolutely legitimately there's no well some want to be superstars too there's no doubt about that and mm -hmm. some of them really want to buddy up to these celebs right um but it's one of the few things men do covering other men in sports it's one of the few things men do one of the few recreations that's not sexual. <laughs> it's got no prospect of it. Uh, you know, whatsoever. Right. You're out covering men. And so it's interesting. And I guess in, in for most of the female reporters, it is too. It's a tough one. I'm, But okay, so let's, so that stage deal we love. Yeah, but I mean, so here's the thing is that one of the aspects of being successful in media for women in particular, for both men and women, but especially for women is being really attractive. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're young and it's exciting and you're around all these famous people. And it's, I would think that it's very easy to get sort of like stars in your eyes about everything and like, and screw up, but you have to, you have to keep it together and know that that's like not a field where you can be that and be successful. It's just not right. Although you know, a twenty-two year old, a twenty-two year old American, especially college graduate who essentially has been since they were seventeen or eighteen, has been on a, um, has been in a hyperbaric chamber of of artificial, um. Uh, life for four years mm -hmm. because they've been in college which isn't real life it's just fun and feel smart and important stuff right a 22 year old ha has not generally some who have done co-ops in this and that some mm -hmm. may generally you've gotten if you've spent your time away at college and coming home with mom and dad and thanksgiving and then go out thanksgiving night with your friends and and then back to college etc mm -hmm. and make believe etc., you've attained almost zero street smarts that's true that's true and i think that 
in addition to that, you've been like fed this message of like total sex positivity. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as long as it's two consenting adults, no big deal. Who can ever tell you no? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, nobody's given you any guidance that says, I mean, even like, even take it away from the media aspect and just put it like, I mean, did you, did people tell you in health class, like, growing up, a, post-sexual revolution like you know you can't hook up with people at work you can't date co-workers no no of course not because it was consenting adults who cares it's their private right. lives it's their business if they want to do it then who are you to say like there's there are problems with that you know and like that this has been one of the things that me too has revealed is that you know that that there are times when there are more conflicts of interest and complexities than just, you know, whatever you feel like doing as long as the other person's into it too. Like, go for it. Right. You know, it's, it is a problem. And I think that, um, that it's something that's going to have to like come down and rebalance in a different place because there, you know, we need to send young people a message that you, there are times and places where you can't uh, date and hook up with the people around you. Right, and that's all that Sage Steele was saying, and she's right. Which brings mm -hmm. us to uh, Emily Ratajkowski. Right. Emily Ratajkowski has written a book. She's – Emily Ratajkowski, to me – and I, did we talk about her last night at all? No, we didn't get to her last night. So I didn't brag that, that we're friends? I didn't? No. Even though we've she's retweeted me, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're friends. Pro essentially, <laughs> essentially, I would um, – it's fair to say – fair to say some people would say dating. Anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> But so she now has come out with a new book mm -hmm. all about my body, whatever. It, and, and, and now she claims that Robin Thicke, in the video that made her famous, in the Blurred Lines video, Robin Thicke groped her. Right. Grope is an odd term. It's so vague. It's unhelpful sometimes. So It sounds like from what I've read that he, he cupped her breasts. grabbed her breasts, yes. He Un yes. Unexpectedly. Right, unexpectedly. Now, this video, and she was in her early 20s at the time. She's 30 now. So she was maybe 23 or whatever. So this video, and um, hold on. She says, if you haven't seen this video, I, I'd be surprised if you have The unrated seen it. version? The unrated version, right. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so, um, sorry about that. I'm looking for my, where's my Radikowski? Where is she said, where is my thing? Uh, Sorry, my, my CPAP stuff is in the way of my models. My CPAP recall stuff. <clears throat> she says, dang it, I need this. She said um, he groped her. Mm -hmm. And she said that, that she was, and she was, um, an unknown model at the time. And that... If she had complained then, at the time, mm -hmm. she said, I was an unknown model at the time. If I had complained then, at the time, that I w never would have made it. I never would have. She was said she wasn't famous. She never would have made it. She wouldn't have been famous. Got to find. Um, so, so, anyway. Anyway. That's what she says. I'm just trying to look for the exact quote, which I had up here, but of course I don't have it up here. Because I now need it up here. I mean, I think that's certainly possible. I think that it's possible she wouldn't have gotten more work if she caused a fuss about it at that time. Do you? Well, there's two things. Um, or she would have been famous for being the model who complained at the Blurred Lines video. Well, there's there's two things. Mm -hmm. She says she wasn't wasn't famous. She wasn't really then. Right. So she wasn't she wasn't famous. Right. So two things, um, she said, and I never would have gotten famous. So one, we don't know that she might have gotten famous, mm -hmm. maybe not. But it's possible. Yeah, it's not like the Robin Thicke machine, you know, <laughs> is world well, well known. But but it's okay. But okay, but she might have gotten famous. Mm -hmm. Um, and she might have gotten famous for a reason that she'd be more proud of now. But also, that doesn't that show you that she transacted then right she decided it was worth getting groped to be famous right and and not causing a fuss about it not to causing be a fuss 
And she's saying also, I never would have been famous. So what's the? Th- what is she telling girls then? <laughs> if you want to get famous, I let Robin to- Thicke grow. Yes, you. I wouldn't have been able to blossom into this and everything I have now, which is awesomeness. If I didn't take a little bit, if somebody couldn't have a little bit of me, what's the message? Seriously, Alice. It I is think, crazy. I think it's it is crazy, and I mean, it's worth noting too. I think that the song itself um, has been considered controversial because of the lyrics. I mean, not just because it has naked people in the video, um, but um, which I mean, you found very impressive at the time. I just certainly. watched it, um, but it, but also, I mean, the lyrics, the words, blurred lines. The song is about like getting mixed signals from a girl and saying like, "I know you want it." I hate these blurred lines, like saying like. Okay, you know. that's that's fine, and that's what the video. But there's a lot of videos about a lot of things but, where the girl don't get to touch is, the like, girls. Pharrell had already like. I mean, I'm not saying like, mm. oh, she should have expected. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like this whole thing is interesting because the song has already like been controversial for being like a little bit rapey, and like Pharrell already distanced himself from it and Did said he really? shouldn't have been involved. Oh, yeah. Coward. So like, this has been. This has already been a little bit touchy. So it's, I mean, it it is interesting because it definitely, like, I mean, I probably this happened. I have no clue. But it definitely fits, I think, with people's confirmation bias about the music industry and about this song in particular, that that's, like, the type of behavior that people would do on this song that's, like, sort of rapey-seeming and whatever, right? That that's, like, it it fits very neatly with the narrative about the Blurred Line song already. Um, you know, it, that being said, like, I, you know, I don't know. I I haven't been in that situation. I've never so been. So she said, yeah. I was an unknown model, and if I had spoken out or complained... I would not be where I am today. I would not be famous. Sounds pretty craven to me. I mean, yeah. So, but here's another thing else. Okay. This video is an extraordinary video that shocked me as an adult that anything like that was allowed. Mm-hmm. Because there was three girls dancing topless. They, it, they're meant to seem like they're not wearing anything at all, but they're, they're wearing a skin color thing with whatever. Right. Topless. It's all sexual. She, Pharrell, and T.I., T. and Robin Thicke. Mm-hmm. It's all sexual. She's contorting herself. She's face-to-face with him. There's no blurred lines at all going. This is all very sexual. He's touching her. He's touching her hair. He's touching her arms. He's touching her skin. He's touching her. This is a... This is an in-your-face sexual video. Mm-hmm. Which includes breasts, which includes her breasts, which I don't know these things, but I'm told are some of the finest, loveliest breasts in the world. I don't know these things. I don't care. I don't look. <laughs> You're not a connoisseur of breasts. Oh, I don't know. I am spoiled with my beautiful wife, so I can't imagine there being anything that could be even in the uh-huh. conversation. So, so here's the thing. Mm-hmm. The entire video, they're all topless. They're dancing around topless. I'm sure this thing took hours to do, 18 hours. Mm-hmm. More topless, topless. They're touching each other. Everybody's touching them, e- each other, etc. Right. At some point, at some point, isn't the mystique and uh, kind of the uh, aura, isn't this the fact that they're all topless for so long and touching each other and, and doing and involved in these uh, embraces, etc simulating sex at some point isn't it just like the like the love actually porn people isn't this just people at work it, what i'm saying is like this is not i mean I'm, i don't know how to say it. It, it it's i'm trying to say isn't the isn't the forbidden aspect of this thing um slowly I mean, or quickly decreased as they're just doing a bunch of stuff together, except the girls aren't aren't wearing tops. I mean, right. So it does seem like that it's a slightly like boundary erasing, right? Yes. That in a normal work situation, one would know not to touch somebody's breast. But in this particular work situation, it's less obvious. He still should have not grabbed her breast. 
I mean, no, like, no, I, I understand. But so, I mean, like, obviously, we're not saying that. But I, I agree with you that the whole thing is, um, the situation is one that deliberately is, uh shocking the senses in that way and the entire thing forgive me for using this word but it's the only one that makes any sense do you want to use it you can the entire thing is totally titillating it is it's the, right. the entire video and if you guys haven't seen the video and just wonder it is unlike any other video i am right. shocked that this thing was ever allowed to be done i didn't know you were i'm just i i'd never seen anyway Although directed Duran by a woman stuff. too actually. is that true yeah that's emily ranatowski said that that's like what made her feel comfortable enough to get involved was that like it was this prestigious Ooh, like the woman, Gislaine maxwell uh, woman uh music video director was doing it so that's like how she thought it would be okay and safe right so, right um but yeah apparently it was not believe it or not the music video where you're being shot naked was not a safe environment right so, so, and that's, I mean, so I understand. And she's also said that she, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I have a trouble. I have trouble. So she did that. And not only, not only is she saying it was worth it because now I'm famous, but now it was so worth it. She's writing a book about it. And that's the biggest part she's selling. Right. This is all you're hearing about because it has to do with what she knows are her two most famous and monetizable assets. So she's just doing it again. This book essentially is another Blurred Lines video. Right. Except she's adding in social conscience into the thing by deriding the video that made her famous while writing a book that capitalizes on the video that made her famous again. Mm -hmm. So how does she deserve any empathy in this? Other than some idiot you know, uh, uh, touched her uh, on, in a way she didn't want. Right. Right. That's, I mean, you're still, you're allowed to go around in life and be an idiot. And you're allowed to go around in life and be attractive and even make money off of being attractive without uh, other people being entitled to grab your breasts. Um, you know, that's still like... You are allowed to make money off of your looks and even your looks in a sexual way without people grabbing you. I mean, like, that's that's the issue, ultimately, at the end of the day. I, uh, uh -oh. Oh. No, and I'm on. <laughs> I understand. I understand that I, I, as well. But, you know, it really seems like, and she has been a, a, a progressive kind of political person for quite some time. But it really seems like this is another bite at the blurred lines apple, um, with a uh, under a different with a different angle. Right. That's what it seems to me. And she's probably, probably it's probably going to um, wake up at, uh, Robin Thicke, who probably has not received a phone call in six years, <laughs> as well. Right. And I mean, like I said, this is already controversial. It was already sort of like persona non grata because of the song the song going out of favor politically oh right and in the stuff. end it's a, it's arguably stolen according to from marvin gay which that doesn't uh, appropriating you know white man pat boone whitewashing a uh, black man's song just the wrong time for that i'm not saying it happened um but also i think that didn't he also cheat on his like wife and kids or something with somebody probably he seems like a total cad and a total jerk though i loved his dad yeah i did too Growing pains? Of course. Of course. All right. Uh, I am. Uh, that is it for me, Alice. That is it for me, uh, the Tom Shattuck Agenda. What do you have very pithily? Um, I am very excited to watch a new show with the kids tomorrow that comes out on Disney+. Plus. Did you receive that from me? Uh, I don't know. Did I? I believe you did. It's in, I'll, se I'll resend it to you again. Oh, that's, okay. Okay. What is the show? Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel. And... It is in unprecedented portrait oh that i'm sorry i played this America's on the other show most vital public servants absolutely now, i certainly think about that seriousness but very few people get to see him <laughs> he's funny weird and really playful god help us 
In 1981, HIV-AIDS was evolving. Yeah, it's a Puff BS piece um, that is happening on Disney Plus from National Geographic on Fauci. The uh, the rush to canonize this guy and it's ridiculous and gross. And it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, the idea that like we're all gonna... I don't have it. Anton has my phone. The idea that we are, um, you know, doing this and like sainting this person who's just um, not. He's not, not OK. And he has been more off the hook recently than uh, than ever. And people are going to see this. And are going to try to need to try to hit reverse on this sometimes because the guy isn't okay. Um, right. He's just it's it's not normal mm -hmm. to do five thousand TV hits when you're a guy <laughs> in your eighties and enjoy the success and the stardom. Even Mr. So, Puff Coronavirus doesn't go on TV right. as much it, as it makes you wonder about public health people though. Are they all wacko? I mean, all you have to do is just be insane, but just. You know, just get a, a a a medical doctor thing. What is that called? What is that? MD. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> MD MPH, which I am, as a matter of fact, Alice. All right, homie. All right. Uh, thank you so much again, everybody, for listening. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Burn Barrel Pod, Facebook.com slash Burn Barrel Podcast. We're at Burn Barrel Podcast.com. We're on Gab, Parlor, Rumble, YouTube, all the places. You can also email us if you'd prefer to do that. That's Burn Barrel Podcast at gmail.com. And you can find us on whatever like podcast platform you like to listen to. If you do Apple Podcasts, leave a review. If you get a chance, that would be awesome. Say la vie.